If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to go to Joshua chapter 14, verses 10 through 12. I want to deal this morning with becoming mountain takers. You see, this year is a different year than we have probably ever had in two or three or four generations. It is a jubilee year. It's not the jubilee year, but a jubilee year. And God is loosing an anointing for you to overcome like never before. It's time that we quit making excuses of why we can't overcome, and it's time to, to move forward. It's time to take that mountain. It's time to kill that giant. It's time to go ahead and get some things done in the kingdom of God. I think the first thing that needs to die this morning is not a giant. It's called excuses. Excuses need to die this morning. We pick up here in verse 10 from the King James Bible. Now and behold, the Lord hath kept me alive as he has said these 45 years. Ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. For those who uh, don't know the King James, that's 85. So the brother's 85 years old and he's giving this speech. And yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so my strength now. For war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain. Underline that in your Bible. Now therefore give me this mountain. Now, some versions say hill country, but I have found out that the definition of mountain and hill country is a lot different in different places, even in America. We have little hills in Missouri, what we call mountains, y'all would call hills, compared to the Rocky Mountains and different things. You go over into that region of the world, <laughs> what they call mountains takes a long, or hills take a long time to get up now. It's all big mountains. But it was the rough area. It was the high place. God calls us to take the high places from the enemy. And every one of us have a mountain that we've got to take for God. Look what he says. He goes on to say, Wherefore the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in the day how the Anakim were there. That's, that's a tribe of giants. And that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me, then I will be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Now, to, to bring this up to really where we are, here he was, 40 years old. God sends him and Joshua in as a spy with 10 others. He goes in there. He and Joshua comes back and says, man, we can do this. We can take this. What's this compared? Did you, did you not see what God did in Egypt? Now, if he could do all that without me having to pick up a sword, just imagine what he's going to be able to do now that I've got a sword in my hand and I have discovered some things about my covenant with God. He said, we're more than able to take the land. But everybody believed the evil report. Have you ever seen that in church? Oh, we can't do that. No, no, that's just too big. Oh, that'll just last just for a little bit. People will get a little excited. You may call it revival, but it's not just going to do anything. How many of us have not been able to take our mountain, not because of our unbelief, but the unbelief of those around us? Let me tell you something. God is in the process right now. Part of the Jubilee anointing is he is renewing our youth. He is renewing our strength because our strength is going to return as in the first day that we face that mountain. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're about to see something special in me. I may be using a whole lot more Ben Gay than I used to, you know. But you know what? With, with age comes wisdom. And God is going to add to your wisdom a renewed strength, a renewed vitality. It's time for us to stop wandering in the wilderness. It's time for us to go on. It's time for us to take those giants. It's time for us to take those mountains. 
Now here's an interesting thing about mountains because what I am seeing right now in the body of Christ, everybody is wandering around the mountain waiting for the mountain to change. How many know mountains have been around a long time? Now here is a prophetic word from God that you can take to the bank. Mountains don't change. <laughs> That's why they're mountains. And here we, have, we thought if we could shout loud enough, if we could give a big enough offering someplace that people on, on television have convinced us that the mountain is going to change if there's just a right anointing and there's just a big enough offering that you send in. That is all a bunch of hokum. The mountain isn't going to change. What needs to change is you. Come on. We have got to become mountain takers. We have got to learn how to war in the kingdom of God and to be ready to take out anything that's on that mountain that doesn't belong to God. Because on the mountaintop is where we always talk about where the presence of God is what? You know, mountaintop experience. You see, many of us today, we're... we're little longer in the tooth, if you will, and there's some things that are bothering us. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. Do you see why God is restoring hope? Your hope the whole time has been on top of that mountain. Come on. And God says, if you take the mountain, you're going to rediscover your hope. And the proverb says that when hope is received, it's like a tree of life. It doesn't matter the size of your mountain. What matters is the size of your God. Got them out of Egypt without them ever having to lift up a sword, lift up a, shoot one arrow, to pick up one spear, to throw one rock. <laughs> Got them out and filled up their pockets before they left. If God is able to do that, what is it about taking a mountain that is so hard? You got to do it. You got to face your mountain and say, that is my mountain. You got to name it and say, it belongs to me. I take authority over it. I'm not going to wander around it anymore because I have two choices. Take the mountain or hear from God. If God says that mountain doesn't belong there, I've got to speak to the mountain to command it to be moved. Now, here's what I have found in my life and the life of all those I've been ministering to the last 40 years. 99.9% .9 of the time, you got to take the mountain. Come on. When Jesus was talking about that, he was talking about obedience to God. You said it back in its context. He says, I never say anything unless the Father says it. I never do anything unless I see him doing it. So unless Almighty God puts his finger on that mountain and says, you know, boy, that don't really belong there. You can speak to it all day long. It's not moving. Regardless of what they tell you on TV, it's not moving. You better put on your hiking boots. You better go ahead and put again, get ready to take that mountain. This year, God is going to require you to face the mountain. And he is going to put at your disposal if you listen. Get time alone away from God. You know, when, when you get away alone with God, we always look for him just to give us blessings. And First thing he's going to do is hand you a big pair of boots. Give you a staff to help give you stability, leadership. 
said, here are some of the things that you're going to need as you take that mountain. And he's going to place you in front of that mountain, and he's not going to let you move unless you're moving up. That's where we are prophetically right now. We've got to determine in every one of us, let me tell you, our, our joy is in that mountain. Our inheritance is in that mountain. Our new anointing, that fresh anointing we're looking for, is in that mountain. It's in the struggles of life when we get to the place where we face what the world has thrown at us head on that we get the greatest blessing, that we get the greatest sense of purpose, that we discover our destiny, we discover our worth. One of the reasons, you know, some, have, you, have you ever sometimes been envious at a believer say, you know what, you had a perfect childhood. You were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You've never had to go through anything. Let me tell you something, folks that, have never went through anything, can't go through anything. Come on. First time it gets a little rough. Come on. I mean, you get ready for battle and you're reaching for their sword and they're looking for another church. What happened to you? You didn't even see the mountain. That was just a rock in front of the mountain. If you've been through some things, how many have been through some things this morning? That was all boot camp. God was training you. You didn't realize that that trial you went through was special forces training. And God is trying to wake you up this morning saying, I'm going to give you a ranger tab to put on your uniform because now, because you've went through this, I have prepared you for that. And go ahead and take your mountain. You've got what you need on the inside of you. We need to have great confidence in the restorative power of our King. The Bible says Moses was 120 years old, and his eye was not dim, his strength was not abated. It means he didn't have to have Geritol and take a nap every, every afternoon. Getting ready to go on the promised land, how many know that was a monumental task? It, most of us said, oh, I'm ready to retire, I've been doing this now for 40 years. Every one of these gray hairs, everybody thinks it was the presence of God, no, it was the people of God who caused all these gray hairs. <laughs> Let's just give this over to Joshua. And I said, no, Lord, don't, don't take me now. Don't take me now. I've not yet begun to see your glory. And he said, you know what? You're just going to have to sit down. God wants to make you so strong that the only way you're going to sit down is God's going to have to tell you to sit down because you're ready to move forward with everything you got. That is the restorative power of our king that at 85, he had the strength of 40. God is going to renew our strength like the eagle. He is going to go ahead and he is going to renew our youth. There is a fresh anointing. There is a Caleb anointing awaiting for the remnant this morning that if I'll just press into God, he is going to renew my strength. He's going to renew my youth. He's going to renew my health. And now I've got a brain on my shoulders that I'm not as goofy as I was when I was 30. Come on now. That's where we are. That's the anointing because God wants you to take your mountain this morning. How much time I got left? 15 months. I only had 20. <laughs> Guys, we're in a... If we'll press into God, it's God's presence and God's word. God's presence and God's word. That book is not a book that's just where you find out how to get blessings and get stuff from God. It's not a spell book. Come on. In that book, you discover who you are. You've got to know yourself. Come on. 
You got to know what, what thrills you. You got to know what tempts you. You got to know your capacity. You got to know your weaknesses. And you give your strengths to God and say, make them stronger. But you also give your weaknesses to God and say, help me overcome them and let them become my strengths. Let them become my testimonies. That book is a book about becoming. I was a sinner. I'm becoming a saint because of the blood of Jesus. And once I get washed in the blood, I'm becoming a warrior. It's time to fight for your family. It's time to fight for your for what God wants to do in your life. It's time to fight to birth that ministry or take that ministry to the next level because you're never going to do it until you take that mountain. Now I want to pray for you guys this morning if I can. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I loose a prophetic anointing over this congregation this morning. Father, I loose a Caleb anointing for renewed strength. Father, I lose eyes, salve, that our eyes can see who we really are in you and to see that mountain. I lose an anointing oil that is going to heal joints, it's going to heal muscles, it's going to heal our bodies. Father, for us to take that mountain this morning, we need to have bodies that are whole. And I lose an anointing. You are Yahweh Rapha. You are Yahweh Rafika, the God who heals us. And Father, I call for a healing anointing this morning to flow over this congregation. Father, heal bodies, restore organs. Father, all the damage the years of wandering because of unbelief of others has caused on us. Father, I command that to be reversed right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. Lord, heal our minds. Lord, I rebuke Alzheimer's. I rebuke dementia. Father, our minds are going to become sharper than they've ever been. We're going to have perfect retention, perfect attention. And Father, over the young people, I break the curse of ADHD, hyperactivity, I break it in the name of Jesus. We're going to be strong of mind, strong of spirit, and strong of body in the name of Jesus. And I command feebleness. You flee away from this place. Sickness and disease. I command you to break your hold this morning. And just let the kingdom flow this morning, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You believe that this morning? Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise.